Hello Bladers, welcome to Loco Skates. Today we're talking about this classic, the Rosis M12 skate. They've made seven million of these boot molds over the years. That's because they've made quad skates and ice skates and aggressive skates and a ton of other stuff. But they've made seven million of those. It's got to be the most produced skate ever made. Um, but today we're talking about the aggressive version, the Rosis M12. Uh, which comes in several different versions uh, depending on when you're watching this video as well there'll be different versions out at whatever time it is you're watching um, but this is the Niels Janssen's Pro model which is the one that I tried out for this video uh, you've also got stuff like the Jai Atkinson Pro model you've got the Sesame uh, ones coming out in a couple of weeks and then you've got the cheaper M12 Black like this so they all basically have the same um, feeling to them so they've got this this classic M12 boot and the cuff and the memory buckle here and then the Rosis uh, UFS sole kit so they all feel like roughly the same when you're skating them but then there is spec differences so the pro model like this which is 170 180 pounds comes with uh, better frames so I'm comparing it to this one it comes with better frames um, and it comes with a flat setup of wheels and it comes with better urethane compound on the wheels. It also has a lower cuff at the back, whereas this one has a high cuff at the back, old school style. And then uh, the liner is thicker and more comfortable in the pro version, whereas the budget version has a thinner liner. The other thing uh, is that the, the budget version has a softer plastic, so they make the pro model with a uh, harder, stiffer plastic. Regardless of those things, this skate here is £115, which is definitely the lowest priced best aggressive skate on the market at the moment without a doubt okay so the skate that i was skating to uh, test these is the Niels version i actually put a, a different frame on it um, it's not too dissimilar to the one it comes as uh, stock with so i guess that is a pretty good comparison generally the way that grinds feel will be very similar on those two models um, let's talk about the fit of the skate a lot of people talk about how they fit very narrow, the Rosis skate. I think this is really subjective to each person because different people have narrow feet at different parts of their feet. And so it's quite hard to make a blanket statement that says, oh, they're narrow, when you know you might have a wide middle of your foot and a narrow end of your foot or whatever. For me personally, they fit all right, except for I, they felt quite narrow on the, on the instep of my foot. It felt like maybe there was some sort of shape going through here that, um, you know, bugged me after, you know, half an hour or an hour of skating. I managed to find a solution to that. There is, if you don't mind me getting this out. So there's a insole within the skate like this, and it's almost like the production of it is made, so it's almost in two pieces. And what I did is I just tore off the top part of that insole. And, let me show you. So it looks like that. So it's just a heel part, but it's got this cupping here on the side of the foot. And that, that kind of protected me from the inside of the shell. And I, I just put a new uh, kind of thicker insole on top of that. And it seemed to work quite well for me. Best thing to do is just to play about with your insoles and see what works for you. So I think, uh, yeah, fit a little bit narrow, but it's not, it's not mega. And in terms of like sizing and length, I skated my normal size in that. I actually, it's a seven to eight shell that one, so uh, they come in different shell sizes, uh, five to six UK, seven to eight UK, nine to 9.5 UK, watch out for that one, and then 10 to 11 UK, and then 12 to 14 UK is the other shell size. Um, so that might help you, help you in buying them. Um, about the liner in the skate, the Rosis liner is definitely the best fitting liner for this shell. I know a lot of people are trying to trying to change out liners these days. People are putting in like, my fits and intuitions. Personally, on this skate, I think leaving the Rosis liner in there is definitely the best bet, especially if you've got a pro model version, which has got the thicker liner. Um, they just fit better than the intuitions and the my fits in that particular shell, in my opinion. Um, so I just kept the normal Rosis liner in there. Uh, support on the skate, yeah, they're quite well known for having good ankle support, the Rosis. As you can see, it's a solid plastic boot, solid cuff. Uh, for me, maybe like there was a little bit of torsional twisting allowance in, in the skate, which some people might like and some people not. 
for me, I've got a bit of a weak ankle, so maybe a razor, skate and cuff works a little bit better for like, holding my ankle like, really in place when you're talking about the twisting motions. Um, but yeah, again, everyone will be a little bit different on that, and generally they're better than most on the market for ankle support. Okay, so we went skating on them yesterday. Um, maybe I can just talk about like, how each of the different types of grinds felt on the skate. So uh, firstly, uh, sole grinds, like near side sole grinds, they're almost like the perfect skate for that because they've got quite a small sole kit or a medium sized sole kit, I guess you could call it. And it's great for, for near side sole tricks because, it, I mean, firstly, when you're grinding a round thing, it doesn't matter what size your sole is, you're either gonna lock on or you're not. But on a square obstacle, then you can really lean into the grind like this because uh, you haven't got too much of a flat plate coming out, so you can lean over and get on top of the grind more. So I'd say that they're great for near side tricks. Top side tricks, maybe a bit of a disadvantage when you've got a slightly smaller sole like this. I know that some people are bothered by that and some people aren't. For me, yesterday when we skated them, I. I landed every top sole, I had no problems. I was, I was skating a square ledge and top soling it and I didn't have any times when, I've, when I slipped out of it or anything. So like right now that, that was great. And the best thing of all about the Roses skate is the groove because the groove tricks are so close to your foot on this skate that they're really controlled. What you've got to do is kind of um, imagine like an Ollie Short, David Sizemore, uh, Alex Brosco, Royale backslide and you know that they look always super legit. So um, it felt really good skating them for Royales uh, and backslides. I could have probably done with breaking them in for an extra like couple of sessions to really get control on backslides, but I'm sure that will happen really easily. Torque slides, can't really comment because I'm not the best person to test for torque slides because I'm not very good at them. But um, as we know, like we've seen endless torque slides from people like Bosco and Sizemore in the skates, so you know you can do it really easily. Gaps in these skates. I didn't do any massive gaps, we just went to a skate park, but I could feel how they felt when you landed off of tricks and how solid that felt. The, the, one of the best things about the Rosis skate and one of the main selling points for me personally is that they've got a raised heel. So um, it's hard to see when you look at the skate, for those of you that don't know, but inside here there's kind of quite thick plastic here and your foot sits with a raised heel. Um, and the raised heel, not only does it put your foot in better position for grinds, in my opinion, but it gives you this shock absorption and this solidity when you land gaps. And like for me, when I was coming off tricks and just stomping them, it felt like super legit, super good. So uh, yeah, really love them for gaps. Overall, the roast is an amazing skate. For me, I think they were slightly cursed. I, uh, I tried skating roses in 1998 and I broke my wrist straight away. And then I tried them 10 years later um, and I shaved my knuckle off on a gap. I've still got the scar to show that one. And then yesterday I managed to eat shit twice on a floor rail. So um, maybe if you're not as superstitious as me, this is the perfect skate for you. But like other than eating shit, they're an amazing skate. And uh, yeah, you can, you can buy Orosis for 115 quid um, or 110 quid plus delivery from Sports Direct but it's cheaper at Loco because you get free delivery. So uh, locoskates.com for the roasties.